This video is a very important topic simply because this is the feeling that every human secretly wants to feel. And because we're too shy, too self-absorbed, not listening, we never give them that feeling. And as a result, we can't influence them. And as a result, they're never even thinking of us. They, they don't do things for us. We don't have that influence over the people that we care about because we just don't do this one thing. And that's validating them. We're not talking about validating people who are inconsistent, validating people who don't show you that who are, who who don't go out of the way to show you how much they like you. Validating. We're not talking about validating people who are abusive, validating people who don't make the effort. No, this validation is a reward for those who treat us well. And there's big validations, and then there are tiny little validations that you could do throughout conversation. But today, today we're going to be talking about how to, in general, why it's important to validate and how to do it, all right? Because I don't care who, who you're going out with. If you validate someone the right way, for example, if you're a woman and you're really, and you're really hot, you know, girl, you know, beautiful, you know, hot, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I just validate you for your looks, that's not going to work. In fact, that might push you away. But if I validate you for your intelligence, I validate you, maybe you write, and I notice that you were writing before meeting up, and I asked you about your writing, and I listened to what you said, and I made you feel like you are a great writer, that sense of validation is something that most people just don't feel. How I tell you that, you how if I maybe I, I validate your personality, that you have a great personality, you're different. If, if I genuinely make you feel that, when everyone's complimenting how you look, you may not sleep with me sleep with me but you, at the you're gonna feel you, you you're gonna feel the need to even say that to me to find a way to validate me and, and in general you be i become more likable because i make you feel good about yourself you only like people who make you like yourself more so if you become that person that lifts people up validates people not people who are inconsistent you're gonna notice you're gonna have a lot of influence so we're gonna be watching robert green break that down and I'm going to be reacting to it. And hopefully you guys enjoy this type of video because this is the type of stuff that we have in the Robert Green Book Club. Click on the description down below for $5 a month to join. Let's continue with the video. Today we're discussing one of the chapters or ideas from the laws of human nature. And this one in particular I'm going to call validation. You see, this video is very, very interesting because even I, when I was doing videos, I was when I first started, I was hesitant about telling people to validate people because my experience with, with validating women um, never turned out pretty well. But I think we we sort of try to validate people who don't like us back. So it, so it's not that validating people is bad and turns people off. It's just that we tend to get the compulsion to validate people when we sense emotional distance. Validation works best when somebody respects you, when somebody likes you, when somebody, you know, when, it, when, when, when somebody's like indifferent about you, those times it works the best. But when somebody looks down on you, when they know that you really like them and that you're desperate and that you're needy, then the validation is gonna feel off. So that's why you have to learn to show strength through not having too much excitement in your nonverbal cues or having too much anxiety in your nonverbal cues. And that's why you have to develop a meditation practice because meditation does lower those nonverbal cues that communicates like nervousness and weakness. Idea is simple. I want you to think back on the times recent or in the past where you have actually received validation from another person for some positive or good quality that you have. And if you think about it deeply, it's a pretty, pretty rare experience. That's quite sad, actually. In mm -hmm. your workplace, for example, when people look at you, they don't see you as an individual, as somebody with your own tastes and desires and problems, they tend to categorize you as something. They tend to see you how they want to see you. And even in your personal relationship. Yeah, a perfect example is with age. If you're if you're a twenty a, a younger person, relatively, right, you're gonna notice that you unconsciously categorize older people as old. And and that in your mind, it cuts off any connection you might have with them. What the funny thing is is that once you actually get to make friends with somebody who you usually wouldn't make, make friends, you could almost sense that that bias in you. You could be like, wait a minute, I thought this person wasn't interested and now I'm friends with them. 
you know it, it, it's 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 it, or better yet try to notice how it feels to go from not knowing someone to knowing them notice the sensation and how they look completely different to you and yeah it, it, it truly is you know it happened in the meditation retreat where in the meditation retreat you don't talk to people so for 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 10 days you're looking at people and you kind of assume who's shy and you kind of assume who has a certain personality because you're, they're not talking but they're moving and so you can kind of sense about them but then when they start talking i was wrong on so many people i thought one person was shy when in reality they were extroverted i thought one person was angry when in reality they, they were nervous like they were just you you kind of assumed their personality because of the way they looked because of your stereotypes but then once the meditation retreat is over they get to show you their personality and then you can sense how much you truly judge people based on how they look because I, I have a certain stereotype of how nerds look like i have a stereotype of how cool people look like and in the retreat there was this one guy who looked like to be like a very cool relaxed guy like you know like a you know non-goofy serious and then when we finally got to talk boom he just became the goofiest motherfucker on the planet he could have stopped talking to me to be honest with you <laughs> right he was like this like 19 year old kid and he liked what i did so he was like like he was just having fun but it was funny how that works how we have our preconceptions ships a lot of that will carry over and in those to you and even in your personal relationships a lot of that will carry over and in those rare moments where somebody looks you in the eye and actually tells you about a quality or an act that you did that they really enjoyed they really liked it's like it has an incredibly powerful effect on you. honestly to me one time this happened and it was my class name his name is jacob and I was insecure in my school because I thought people didn't like me, to be honest with you. And Jacob, I remember he was like, man, it's, 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 it's going to be because I was going to go from the second year class to the third year class. And Jacob looked at me and said, it's going to be nice to have, around, to have you around, man. You have a great energy. You have a very, um, he says something about, you have a loving energy about you. It's going to be fun having you. And I'm like, honestly, I, it was, it, it really, it, 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 it definitely like, it flattered me. It flattered me. Like, like. Oh my fucking god, he's gay! Look, he's flattered. No, I'm, I'm not gay, but if it, it 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 hit me, like I'm like, yo, thank you, bro. I I really appreciate that. It, it, and and it, that that rarely happens. That rarely happens. It's important to give people those feelings because it's it, it heals them. It 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 it, it, it soothes their pain. People are in, are in pain a lot, even if they look confident. People need to hear good things about themselves that are true and unique and this is what he's talking about you now that's not to say that you're all goodness and wonderful and just a great person because we all know that that's not true it's not even it's not true of me it's not true <laughs> he, say, he sounds like me because i say that i'm like yo you're not an angel you know like <laughs> your kids love you but that don't mean you're not <laughs> i'm kidding any human being not even of supposed saints among us but you do have some good qualities you do have things that need or should be validated that could be something in your ethics you support other people it could be your brains your intellect something you've created on and on and on or it could be your empathy etc you have these qualities and to have somebody look at you and see you as an individual not as a category and say you know when you said that or when you did this it was really meant something to you it kind of melts you it has a very very powerful effect and then the opposite happens i remember when i first started learning english in fourth grade I, I started getting the hang of English and then I started talking more in class and I'm a big talker and most people didn't know that but I just didn't know English and I, I started participating in class I, I love participating and then this dumbass stupid ass freaking Bronx energy Timberland wearing black Air Force having braids on with, with, with too much grease in the hair girl said um, I know you're learning English but um, don't talk so much you're interrupting and I remember I didn't talk as much anymore after that she did the opposite. She hurt the ego. She unvalidated me. And in, and I remember it kind of, it stuck. It, it definitely stuck. And it made me insecure about my accent. I remember when I, in college, I would try different accents to see if I was more likable. And people thought I was like weird because I was trying different accents, you know? But the, what people didn't know was that I was made fun of my accent when I was growing up. People, I remember a girl who used to laugh at my accent when I would read. She would laugh uncontrollably, like like she was watching fucking David Letterman on TV. Like, what the hell? Where's the joke? All right, what's the punchline? And the teacher wouldn't do nothing. So it just 
it did the opposite of this. It unvalidated me. And so validation frees people. It frees people from themselves. It allows them to feel better about themselves for once. You know, like it would have been nice if somebody told me I like your accent because I had a very thick Hispanic accent. It would have been nice if somebody said, hey, you know, your, 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 uh, your accent is nice. You know, no, but the, I got the opposite. I got made fun of. And so this is the opposite of validation. And you can see how this lifts people up. And, 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 and people will deeply appreciate this. Okay, so establishing that idea in your head about yourself, I want you to flip that around and to sort of sense the power you could have if you can give other people that feeling. And sadly enough, how rarely you do that, how you have a tendency to look at people and not see them as individuals, to kind of focus on their negative qualities. And if they're you focus on their... It, it, when you're getting to know people, observe what makes them unique. Pay, a, pay attention to what makes them different. Pay attention to little quirks in them that are, that are unique and good. And let them know that. Don't be obvious about it, but mention it. You know, because people are yearning to feel good about themselves. People are yearning to be validated. Their positive cause, it's always, oh yeah, but it's because they, you know, they have this, that, and the other. They're privileged, they went to college, they da 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 And so you have the same problem that people give to you. And so what I'm asking of you is to think of this. William James, the great American psychologist, thought it was the deepest human need to feel validated by another person. Because if you think of it, who we are and how we think of ourselves depends on what other people think of us. Mm -hmm. We're a social animal, right? Nobody lives completely alone or isolated. And the worst feelings we have are when we feel ignored or when we feel like nobody appreciates us. So with that baseline, I want you to consider in your relationships with other people, in your workforce, if you want the power, the ability to influence people, to get them on your side, to get them to do things that you want, you have to first think of this fact that they require validation. And if you... This makes so much sense. You know, that guy, Jacob, when I left, I gave him my weed. You know, that guy, Jacob, when he would do a good painting, I would compliment him. I would go out of my way to compliment his painting. Sim well, first of all, he was a, an amazing painter. Fact that they require validation. And if you make them feel insecure, the opposite of this, about their intellect, about their morals, well, that's, about their willpower. What, you know, saying what that girl did to me, pretty much. <laughs> They, they did something but they had no control over it you're going to create an enemy you're going to create the opposite of validation so knowing the power in it no this happened to me i'll say this shamefully there was this one girl who asked me what do you how do how do you think i come across she asked me an honest question and it was during the time in my life where i when i was really honest <laughs> and i was like yo okay um you come across as stuck up um as a little arrogant but once they, once you dig it to know you, you're actually a pretty cool person. Blocked. She fucking blocked me and never talked to me ever again. <laughs> I should have never said that. Or when one time my girl, my friend, after like a two two years of seeing her, she was like, "How do I look? Did I gain weight?" And she fucking she gained weight, bro. And I was like, "Yeah." Never saw her again. <laughs> you know, I know people say it's on them. Yeah, it's true. It is on them. But at the same time. You can't do that, Alexis. I know it's the truth, but you can't do that. You you gotta know they're not really asking for your honest opinion. They're, look, they're looking for validation. Knowing the deep, deep, deep human need we all have for this to be treated as an individual and to be respected and appreciated for some quality that we have, then use that power on other people and think of it of how you could give them a sense of that validation. Choosing the qualities and often, particularly people who are successful, they tend to get a lot of validation from the public or whatever for qualities that have to do with their fame or their success. But they're, Yeah, like my YouTube channel. They don't get it for other things that most people ignore. So look at those things where they need to feel validated, where other people aren't giving it to them, where there's a quality that they feel is underappreciated and you can sense that in them and give them that sense of you see them for who they are and you're reflecting back to them the sense that they are important that they are worthy of attention that they are a decent or 
brilliant or whatever kind of quality that you want to reflect back on them. So think deeply about that in all of your social interactions, particularly if you're trying to move people in any particular direction. So what I'm trying to communicate is that everyone has a need. Doesn't matter how confident they are, it doesn't matter how successful they are. If they are successful for writing, getting validated for their writing is not gonna really make them happy. They're still deeply unhappy because some there's nobody's paying attention to every part of themselves. So if everyone's paying attention to this part, maybe the one the the painter's side of this person never gets validated and so he yearns for validation so always in all of your relationships look for what you can validate this person as long as they're not being inconsistent as long as they're respectful right as long as they are not um, arrogant validate them right find your own way even your co-worker this is how you charm people, especially are the, the partners of the opposite sex, right? You learn to validate them from within by first paying attention, listening to them, learning what, what words do they use, learning what they like and what they don't like, what makes them unique, continually looking out for what makes them different. You don't have to ask interview questions. Don't be so obvious about it. But everyone reveals themselves in conversation because people talk a lot. Get them to talk about themselves and you, by you listening, one, it validates them, but also you can hear the things that they value. How do you notice that? Through their nonverbal cues. They'll start talking more. Their faces become more animated. They become a little bit more extroverted when talking about that topic. And you just slowly start observing and you just let the wind take you like a sailor letting the wind take you. You learn, you find out who they are and what makes them unique through a casual, normal conversation, right? And you'll know what, how to validate them from there. You, you know, it, it, it'll, it, because the problem is that the reason why you can't think of how to validate some people in your life is simply because you're just not paying attention. You know, we know how to, we know what to say to some, to some of our, some of our good friends to make them feel good. We know that, but we just don't do it. Let's go out of our ways to do that, especially with our partners. And studies show that complimenting your partner, um, um, actively listening to your partner, um, and, and responding to the things that they say with empathy leads to longer relationships. And so this is pretty much validating them, right? As opposed to children who their parents don't, you know how children, they stop listening to their parents, right? Because they, are, they keep hearing the same thing. Well, the reason why they stop listening to their parents is simply because their parents always make them, make their opinions feel dumb. They feel dumb and their parents go out of their way to say how wrong that they are. So their parents are invalidating their intelligence and even humanity in some, to some degree. And the kids resent that. And as a result, they'll rebel against everything that you say because you're not validating them. All you're doing is trying to be parent. Oh, the, the big parent who's, who's strict and that the kid doesn't know what he's talking about. And so they shut off. That's an example of not validating people. And as a result, you can't influence them. They, you tell them not to do drugs and they'll do drugs, you know? So it's the same thing with our partners. You have to find a way to validate partners who are consistent, who treat you well, For friends who treat you well. You have to learn how to validate them and pay attention because if you don't, you're going to lose them. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. All right, so if you guys enjoy that type of content, you could join the Robert Green Book Club and in general, my Patreon. When you read the Bible, people explain to you what the Bible says. And sometimes reading the Bible by yourself can be a little difficult to understand the concept. So the point of this Robert Green Book Club is to help you decipher and how to apply Robert Greene's books into your life. So that, the, so that means The Art of Seduction, Dirty the Strategies of War, The Laws of Human Nature, The 50th Law, and 48 Laws of Power. How to implement it in your life so that it's not just something abstract. But the Robert Greene Book Club starts at $5 a month. And as you can see here, it's full of Robert Greene videos, right? And these are also questions that people ask me. So not only do you get the Robert Greene videos for $5 a month or a gentrified cup of coffee a day, um, you also can get all the other videos, Robert Greene videos, and you guys can ask me questions with it, right? So it's, it's I have like a two or three or four years worth of content and usually most of the Robert Greene videos are over 30 minutes and I complete all the chapters and because I do love his videos, um, it, there's a lot of enthusiasm behind it because it's just a lot of people learn from me, right? Um, so this is how it works. This is a membership. 
because you guys can get a lot of benefits from it, right? So you got, for $1 a month, you get one free videos per month, right? $1 a month, one free video. Um, for $5 a month, you get all of the Robert Green videos um, and you know the book club videos and the Q&A questions that I get. With the Mindful Gang members, you also get the Robert Green videos and you get it in audio form, right? Um, and I believe you can also ask me one question per month with this. So I got to update it, but with this one, you guys can actually ask me a question. And I'll respond to you like I respond in most of my um, Pillow Talk Hour videos. So with this one, you, you could ask two questions, right? Two questions. Um, and by the way, people, I got to update this, but it's what I said, okay? <laughs> two questions per month and the Robert Green Book Club videos and all the, the Q&As. And then this way you get a drawing of you. You get a um, you get a pen drawing of you and I'll send you the photo. Or if you guys want me to send it, you guys have to pay for that. But generally speaking, um, it's a great thing to have. Um, if you guys, this is almost like my second channel. I have videos here that I don't have on YouTube. So get the opportunity and join the Robert Green Book Club because a lot of people say that Robert Green's videos are great. The issue with his videos is that sometimes with, with his audiobooks or his books is that sometimes they sound abstract. You know what I'm saying? Like when they say um, when they say something along the lines of always say less is necessary. You know, how do you do that? You know, when do you say less is necessary? What about in an interview? Do you just say nothing? Are you going to be a mute? I teach you the nuance of his teachings in that course. OK, so it's really it's really exciting because last week we talked about. Um, there was a part, a video, a there was a um, a artist seduction video about how to start, how to confuse reality and and fantasy, and it really tells you, it explains to you why some people join cults. It, it was it was honestly the most mind blowing video I've ever, the most mind blowing uh, Robert Green book club video ever. Let me show you. I think it's this one. Um, let me show you right here because it just blew my mind. So if you guys want to purchase it, purchase it just for five dollars a month. Click on the description down below. And there, this one, this was crazy. This one is insane, man. Insane. For five dollars a month, click on the description down below and I'll see you guys inside, man. Um, and oh, you guys can also message me and I respond a lot. Um, sometimes I don't, but I always read. I always read the messages. And um, yeah. And you guys can ask me what types of videos on Patreon you guys want me to make. So it's like a little cult community people yeah that's why right, people the mindful attraction cult yeah that's why i'm called father alex yeah that's right people you just didn't know that you didn't know you were in a cult <laughs> all right man i'll see you guys inside take care